Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, welcome. I'm glad that you found us. If you are a returning visitor or a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. And if you are a visitor, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Let's just make this a permanent relationship, okay? So today we will be making um, an ornament. So I do have these ornaments in my Etsy shop, but we will be making this um, ornament. We will be sublimating onto this ornament. Christmas happens to be, besides my birthday, it happens to be my favorite holiday. So I can celebrate Christmas all year and I listen to Christmas music all year. So I'm very excited about doing this um doing this ornament okay I will be posting another video making an ornament um but using more so making it glitterized it'll be a, a regular uh ornament a plastic ornament but today we will be sublimating onto both sides of this ornament all right so let's get started all right y'all so this is the ornament and so wherever you get your ornaments from make sure that there isn't a film on top of the ornament um you can kind of tell a little bit uh there's a little lifting in certain parts on this particular one but most of these ornaments they have a, a film on top like it's a plastic film um it's really to protect uh probably from like scratches or anything like that so you want to make sure that you take that film off okay before prior to sublimating because you don't want to sublimate your ornament with that foam on it i see it's very very thin so you may think that it's not there but you guys see it's very very thin so make sure you take that off of both sides because the surface should be very smooth you shouldn't be able to see any uh, bubbles or any other types of blemishes so we're just going to do it on the other side also this ornament i'm making it for my assistant principal every year my class we make ornaments we usually make the ones with the glitter and vinyl um and personalize them for staff and this year um i'm going to do since i'm not in with my students for us to do it together i'm going to simply uh do this one for my assistant principal and yeah so I already have the design I'm going to switch over to the computer so that you guys can see the design and how I'm going to print it out I do want you all to know that for the circular um, ornaments the ones like this it's pretty easy to determine or to get a template um, all you really have to do is measure the length find the center point of your circle measure the width and then from top to bottom find the center portion again but honestly if this is a regular circle all you want to do is and it's not um oval shaped you only really need that measurement okay so this is going to be the measurement for the width and the length okay so we're in illustrator now and i just want to show you all how i go about putting the circle uh, or making a circle template so I already have the images that I'm going to use for the front and the back of the ornament. So I don't, we won't be designing that. So over here, in order to get a shape, each design software has the option of inserting shapes. For this circle, we are going to click on the ellipse tool, okay? So once you click on that, you click into the screen. And what's important here is that so that you don't distort your circle, all round circles that are evenly distributed have the same width and the same height. Okay. So when we measured our circle, it was about three and a quarter inches. Okay. In width. And so we know that it's going to be three and a quarter inches in height as well. And it's that simple. 
okay, in creating. So it, sometimes it's tempting to make it a little bit larger by dragging onto the anchors, but that would that could possibly distort the circle. If it's something that you're shaping and it's not, you know, you don't have an object to measure it to, if you click onto the shift key and click onto the anchor and drag it, the proportions will remain even, okay? But we don't need that. We're just going to go ahead and print. And so I'll show you all how I print or the settings. So today we're going to be printing from the Epson Ego Tank 2750. Already right here, I see where my image is going over the border. So it's important to pay attention to that. You don't want to print something and it's cut off. This printer, there is borderless printing with this printer, but we don't really need it because this isn't a large image. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's within the parameters and now it is. And we will go to setup. So once we're in setup, I like to make sure that these two areas are correct. So I like to access the print settings options and also the color options. So once you click into the print setting options, this is the screen that you will get if you are on a MacBook. Um, on PCs, it may look a little bit different, but you pretty much have the same options. So you are going to click into the media type. I always use premium presentation matte, but your, you, you may find a better image um, using another media type. I also make sure that I select high quality and always remember to mirror your image, okay? Once we are done with that, I go into color options and in advanced settings, I this is the default Epson Vivid. I always select, or for the most part, I select Adobe RGB. Now there are times that I use other uh, modes and other settings, but this is my go-to. And my gamma is a 2.2. Here you can adjust the brightness, the contrast, saturation, the level of cyan, magenta, or yellow. I sometimes adjust the brightness. And for this one, I will adjust it by three. And then you click on to print. And you print out your image. And I will meet you at the key press. All right, guys, so I've already printed our images and I cut them out. I just wanted you all to know, so when you have these, uh, these blanks that have hard surface, you just want to make sure that everything is off. So what I did was prior to um, the image finishing printing, I just went ahead and cleaned this off with a little bit of alcohol just to make sure and I felt it to make sure it's smooth because I didn't want anything to block the image from transferring um, in any of the areas of the ornament, okay? So I do do that just to make sure and we are going to tape this with a little bit of heat tape. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to just put my tape here underneath because I'm going to tape it this way and I'm going to place it this way also, okay? So we have this. I'm just going to put a little bit up more here. I don't really like touching the image too much because Things kind of, um, you don't want any particles or anything on the image that that will prevent the ink from transferring how you like it. All right, so we have it here. And then I am going to place our image on top of, oh, I'm gonna place the blank on top of the image. And as you can see, it's a little bit larger. I did make it a little bit larger than the actual ornament, but that is okay. And then I am simply going to pull this over and tape. 
So you may say, well, why don't you just print, put both of them on together at the same time? Um, for me, that doesn't work really well because remember the contact or the heat, the plate, the top plate will be making contact with the side where the image is and I don't think it's gonna make that much contact and this is pretty thick. So I don't wanna risk ruining my ornament, okay? And it's just that simple. And so we are going to press this for um, 60 seconds at 400 degrees. And I'm using leftover butcher paper to cover it while it is under the press. Okay. All right guys, so we're back at our heat press and I just have a small piece of butcher paper that I'm going to use for the bottom of our template or of our ornament. And I am going to place it here. And then I will put another piece of butcher paper on top we don't want any of that ink going onto the top plate. And we are going to press this for 60 seconds. All right, so I've already lifted up our heat press and we have our ornament. And so I'm going to take the tape off so that we can see the ornament is very hot, so be very careful, okay? It is a very, very thick, I don't know if you guys saw just how thick it is, but yeah, it's super hot, but I don't know if you guys can see, but it's a nice um, thickness. Be careful when using your weeders, I'm always scratching things. We are simply going to flip this over and put the other image on top. All right. It came out pretty good. I love the coloring on it. It looks so pretty. All right, so there we have our or one side of our ornament and we are going to flip it over. I do see a little bit of tape left on there. So I'm going to simply pretty much the same way that we taped the other one down. We're gonna tape this one down. Make sure that your surface is nice and clean, okay? So then I am simply going to take it and as straight as I can, um, align it up. This will be fine. All right, so now we are going to repeat the process. This is going to go down for 60 seconds. All right guys, so the other side is done sublimating. And so we will go ahead and we will remove the tape. And so I'm very careful on this side because I don't want to scratch it. So I'm going to use my God-given tool, my finger. So it's all done. All right, y'all. So we are all done sublimating our ornament and it came out very nicely. I did have like some leftover um, Christmas ribbon from last year. I usually go to Michael's after Christmas and buy up all of the leftover um, ribbon when it's on sale. So this is what we have. This is one side of the ornament and the other side simply has her name on it. Okay. And it's subbed very well. 
this um, ornament is very thick so it's very sturdy and it will last and I think that she is going to love it so if you like this video and you enjoy the content you found it helpful please be sure to like the video also if you are not a subscriber you are more than welcome to make this one of your permanent YouTube stops so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you are notified whenever we post new content um, and definitely go on to Facebook go on to craftable things and like our Facebook group on that group we try to help each other so if there's any questions or any concerns that you may have feel free to post and someone will be able to answer your questions all right so that's it for today thank you so much for watching until next time